Hey team, Kestova back here with our third PE example problem. Let's jump right in. So a column with the cross section shown carries an axial load of 560 pounds applied at the centroid of the section. The compressive stress, compressive stress for the cross section is what? Now, it's always good when I was studying for this to really understand, not jump the gun, and say what is the problem asking. It's asking for stress. Stress, as we know, is force over some area. So pounds per square inch, pounds per square foot, you know, kips per square foot. Uh, I'm using U.S. kind of terminology for um, loading criteria, but uh, metric unit, a couple of other things. So we always want to be aware of what we're being asked of. So it's a stress. Well, do we have any of these things? So we're going to need a force. We're going to need an area. And if we look at our problem, ah, that we are given something. We're given 560 pounds. Well, 560 pounds is a force. So we have the top part. So that means we still need an area. Well, we are given a cross-sectional area. Know how I say area. So the only real thing we need to do for this problem is find the area of the cross-section based on the dimensions given, finish our stress equation, and that will give us our answer. Now we can do this, there's no weird hoops to jump through because the axial load is applied on the centroid, so as they say here, at the centroid of the section. And this creates a uniformly distributed stress. Um, if we had some type of moment applied or that, that axial load was off-center um, and it wasn't applied directly on the centroid of the, of the member or of the column, then you would start to get uh, unevenly distributed stresses and the question might get different and get a little more complex. But this is the PE. These are supposed to be designed to be six minutes long, if that. So this question is pretty straightforward. Okay, so the easiest way that you want to go about this is actually split up into three different areas. Area 1, Area 2, Area 3. Area 1 is equal to, so this is your top flange, is equal to the width of your flange times the thickness of your flange. You have 2 inches, 2 inches, but you also, since I've split it like this, you also, or I should say, like this, you also need to take into account that thickness of the web itself. So the thickness of the web we know is 0 0.75 inches. So we're going to include that in our width of our flange. And you're going to multiply that by the thickness of the flange, which is also 0.75 inches. That's going to get you 3.563 inches squared. Area 2 is just the reduced web section, because again, based on how I've cut, we've chopped off those web sections. So you actually need to take the full depth of the member and subtract out the thickness of each flange. So that's 10 inches minus 0 0.75 inches minus 1 inch times thickness of web, which again is uh, point, 0 0.75, similar to the top flange. That's going to get you 6.188 inches squared. And then the third area, which is our bottom flange, is going to be the width of the bottom flange, which again, since they do not give dimensions at the bottom, you then can assume that the bottom flange uses the same dimensions as the top. So you know it's 2 inches plus 2 inches plus 0 0.75 inches times the thickness of the bottom flange, which is 1 inch. That equals 4.75 inches squared. Summation of the area equals 14.5 inches squared. Now we have our area. So now we can plug into our stress equation. So stress equals force over area. And when we look at our units, we have pounds and we have inches squared. Our answer are given in pounds over inches squared. So we know we're already in the right units, so we don't need to change our units. That just reduces to 38.6 PSI, or pounds over inches squared. And that you can round up to 39, 
which gets you answer is C. That's it, everyone. Another problem down. As always, like, subscribe. Um, let me know if these problems are too easy. Again, the I know the PE before you, you pass it. It seems really daunting. It could be really scary. But these problems are not designed to be overly complex. The afternoon portion, they get a little bit more specific because they are based on the discipline that you're going into, so structural or geotechnical or transportation or environmental in terms of civil PE exam. I can't speak to the others. But the, the morning portion, the 40 questions in the morning, which is the general portion, which encompasses uh, all portions of civil engineering, those are designed to be pretty straightforward and just testing your general knowledge of this information. So I found that I was always worried that each problem was trying to be really tricky and you had to look really deep into it and think about it for a long time, but you don't. Um, get, take the information that's there, make sure you know what they're asking for, and then usually it basically just breaks down into a missing variable somewhere in an equation and plugging that, finding it, plugging it in, and getting your answer. That's it for today. So thanks, guys. See ya.